Party down in Porch County, which is one of the largest Tea Party groups in the state. We have about 2,600 members. Uh, I'm also the president of the Ohio Citizens PAC, because in order to do business in the state of Ohio, if you want to endorse state candidates, you have to have a PAC, so that's why we have a PAC. And then uh, I'm also the president of the We People Convention, which is an uh, educational entity that puts on a statewide convention to educate Tea Party people about activism, how to be engaged politically, uh, about the Constitution, those type of things. I'm also the past president of the Ohio Liberty Coalition. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that Ohio is very unique in that uh, our Tea Party groups have a, a statewide governing body. And the word governing is probably not correct because they, they don't tell anybody what to do. It's, a, it's an organizational structure. Uh, basically, it, it's a communications vehicle so that everybody who's a leader in the Tea Party movement is getting the information they need and they choose how they act on it. Uh, and though the Ohio Liberty Coalition may suggest a course of action, uh, as, I, as I tell people, and a coach will relate to this, I spent most of my life as a coach and as a CEO of a company, I still am the CEO, CEO of our company, our, my wife and I own a company called TRZ Communications. And uh, when you're a coach, a head coach, and a CEO, you have a lot of power. Uh, you can say, we're going to do this, and everybody says, okay, and we do it. And uh, when I became the head of the Ohio Liberty Coalition, it was a very humbling and terrific learning experience for me because uh, I had absolutely zero power and immense influence. And that was a very different thing. And so uh, I found myself in an environment, and I think one of the things you should know about the Tea Party uh, is because you hear a lot of things that aren't true, uh, but the Tea Party is really the last marketplace of ideas in this country. Uh, the Tea Party people, we encourage free speech, we encourage debate, we encourage re research, and I think Tea Party people are the most informed people you'll find in this country because we work hard at, at understanding the truth. We work hard at finding the facts. We work hard at questioning. And we, we care about the truth. We are not ideologues. We don't, we don't come to you with, this is our point of view, we're going to prove it. We come to you looking for facts, and we try to learn the truth, and then act upon that truth. And that's really an important part of the Tea Party movement, and it's what makes the Tea Party movement as strong as it is. Because we're not afraid of the truth. We embrace the truth, even if we don't like it, even if it's something we don't agree with. We understand it is the truth, and we can move from that truth. So, uh, so I like to believe that we're a very honest bunch of people. Uh, and I always tell people that, you know, one of the things that they say was humbling is that, you know, as the, as the marketplace of ideas, you know, I could say, send out an email as the head of the Ohio Liberty Coalition today saying that today is Saturday, and I would get three emails back saying, which calendar are you using? Okay, I mean, I mean, you know, there's a lot of different perspectives. And what's powerful about that is those perspectives give me insight. Okay, gentleman sitting over there just said to me while we're eating lunch, I said to these emails, right? And he sends me emails. And one of the blessings that I have is that I have people from all over the state and all over this country who send me things, things that they've researched, things that they, you know, believe they're true, things that you know, are facts that are not easy to find. And because of that, uh, as I say on my radio show, and I forgot to mention that, I also have a radio show called Tea Party Talk with Tom Z. It's on Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. on WHLO in Akron. It's also uh, streamed live. I record the video of it, stream it on Thursdays at 10.30 at TeaPartyTalkWithTomZ.com. So you can go to my website anytime you want, on your phone, on your iPad, on your laptop, you know, and, and watch the streaming video of the shows that I do. And so, you know, as, as someone who's involved with Tea Party, you know, I, I say it's Tea Party Talk with Tom Z. I always make sure to say that I don't speak for the Tea Party because no one does. The Tea Party is autonomous. These are free Americans, free thinkers. Every group has its own, you know, you know Kim, you know, from Lake County and, and you know, uh, Denver, you know, from Geauga. You know, every group has its own area of interest, its own fervent believers in certain things. And that's great. That's great because it makes it a lot harder to kill us. Right? Because you can't cut the snake off the head because there is no head on the snake. Okay? And as much as they've said, you know, you guys are all controlled by the Koch brothers, uh, I can tell you I still haven't seen that check from the Koch brothers. And I'm looking forward to it someday when it comes, but it, it has not come. Okay? Uh, I've probably given a lot more to the Koch brothers than the Koch brothers have ever given to us. So, uh, you yeah, know, that's the reality of it. So, you know, I, I tell you that about myself uh, because I think it'll give you some perspective on what I'm going to tell you. 
Um, I think you also should know that while I'm as old as some of you are, uh, I am a child compared to most of you as far as your activism. And uh, this is a, an important issue. Uh, we Tea Party people are late to the party. Some of you people have been fighting for conservative values for 40 years. Uh, I have not been. I was running my company, I was raising my family, and I thought my job was to vote. I didn't give money to political campaigns, I was not politically active, I did not think that was my role. And so the Tea Party is a new experience for me, as it is for most of the people in the Tea Party. And it has been, in many ways, horrific experience. Because uh, there's nothing harder, you know, it's kind of like the little kid that finally learns there is no Santa Claus. You know, it's pretty hard to face the fact that, you know, you've been living a lie. And uh, what's been horrific for us in the Tea Party is that we believed in certain things. We believed that there was a constitution. We believed that there was a form of government. We believed that there was a rule of law. We believed that there was honesty and integrity. We believed in the values that we grew up with and lived and do practice in our businesses and in our lives. And we have found that our nation is bankrupt in those areas. And that corruption is further beyond than we could ever imagine. So now we are engaged. And I posted on my Facebook page today a really good article about the Tea Party uh, that Heritage put out today. So if you go to you know, Tea Party Talk with Tom Z or Ohio Citizens Pack or Leave You a Convention, you'll find a uh, uh, a link to a story where they're talking about how important the Tea Party is and has been and will be and why it is. And I encourage you to read that. Uh, Stephen Hayes is one of the people that writes in, in that uh, panel, but there's a couple other people. And um, I think you'll, you'll learn something about the Tea Party that you probably don't know. So I, I come to you with that background of, you know, I, I am humbled by most of you who've been fighting the fight for life for 40 years, and I'm just this newbie who's just finding out you know, what the world's really about. And uh, we respect what you do immensely, and um, you know, we are happy to be invited to events like this, so there is communication between the Tea Party and the, uh, the life movement. Because we are, you know, I like to get rid of the hyphens. We're all conservatives. We're not you know, social conservatives and fiscal conservatives, we're conservatives. The hyphen is a way to divide us, and we will not be divided. Uh, and I will say this before I start to give you some of the facts and information I want to share with you today, uh, that you know, one of the things that's been uh, a problem with the Tea Party is that when we started, we uh, were co-opted by the Republican establishment for the most part. And uh, in that process, they were very adamant about keeping us out of social issues. Their constant refrain to us was stick with fiscal issues, stick with budgets, stick with deficits, but don't talk about life, don't talk about marriage, don't talk about social issues of any kind because it's divisive, it's this and it's that. And that's a lie. Uh, that's a lie. Because we know one thing for sure, we're a representative form of governance. And without morality, without honesty and integrity, without people who can't stand up to the temptations of power and, and money, we cannot have a representative form of governance. So if I care about budgets and I care about the, you know, uh, fiscal matters and, and immigration policy, that's great, but it starts with morality. And so we carry that very high nowadays. We, we look for morality first, and then we look for policy after that. We're looking for people who we trust, like Kim Lori, who you will never you cannot do anything to Kim Lori to make her give up her values. You can't do it. It's not possible. And they'll say, oh, she won't compromise and she's inflexible and she's all that. But that's what we're looking for. We're looking for representatives like Kim Lori who will go and do what she says and not be intimidated and not take bribes and represent the people and not money special interests. And that's why. We've endorsed Kim Lori for her commissioner's position in Lake County. So, we are now engaged in really the fight of our lives, aren't we? All of us, across the board, we're, we're engaged in a fight that involves every aspect of our lives. And one of the challenges that we face is, uh, I call it the bright, shiny object problem. And that is, you know, everybody wants to elect the next president, but they don't want to elect the next city council member. 
Okay. And but the reality is, is you know, it's the it's the places closer to home that make the difference. The reality is, is that you have to start winning on the school board and you have to start winning on the city council and the township trustees before you're ever going to affect what's going on at the higher level. And so in the Tea Party movement, we had many false attempts and flame outs and, and actually some successes, uh, but not many, where everybody wanted to run for senator or congressman or you know, governor or whatever else. And that's all filled with ego. And that's all filled with people who are, you know, really not being honest to their values and not being humble and not, you know, trying to understand that there's a role to play. And it's not about you, it's about our country, it's about our cause. And, and that's a hard conversation for some people. So we went through a period of time where a lot of people, you know, got their egos getting in the way and they did things they really shouldn't do. And, uh, you know, we've kind of gotten through that period. So it's been an education, and uh, it's, it's been an interesting education because I love history, I love American history, and, uh, and I'm happy to know what I know, even though what I know is not very good, okay, about our country, okay? It's, it's frightening. Uh, I mean, it literally is. It's literally frightening uh, what we know about our country, what's going on, and Dan's going to scare the daylight out of you when he talks about immigration because what he's going to show you is the truth, and it's frightening. If you're not frightening, if you're not frightened, you're just not paying attention. Okay. So, this is the time for the truth. And so, uh, I would ask you to ask any question you want to ask about the presidential situation that's going on, about anything that's going on in the state here, about anything about the Tea Party. This is your time to ask blunt questions and get blunt answers. Okay. So, let me begin with uh, the presidential election. Today is a very, very, very important day. South Carolina is very important. Uh, if, the, if the polls hold true and Donald Trump wins by the percentages that the polls say, I do not believe there's any stopping him from winning the nomination. Uh, it's, it, the problem is that we are splitting our vote. The problem is that you know, not a majority of Republicans don't support Donald Trump. About 33%. But the problem is they're all split up amongst a bunch of candidates. And as long as that continues, it plays to Trump's benefit. And because of the situation in South Carolina, if he is to win big, then it's really going to get very difficult for anybody to, to, you know, to talk to him. Now, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Um, I do believe that Ted Cruz can win South Carolina. It's a strong evangelical state. And the polls have been wrong in virtually you know, every place you want. Okay? And, and I think it's very important that Ted Cruz either win or be very, very close. I'm fearful that he'll finish third and Marco Rubio will finish second. Okay? And that means everybody stays in. And as long as there's three people in, I think Mr. Bush and, and, and uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Carson may be leaving the race after this, this race today. Uh, I, you know, we all know that John Case is in through Ohio. That's the plan, and he's sticking with it, and New Hampshire confirmed that. And that's a problem again, because it cars, it's hard to consolidate when you're splitting that vote. Okay? Now, there are those of you, you know, who are, you know, who are supporters of Ted Cruz, how many of you are Ted Cruz supporters? Okay. All right, how many are Trump supporters? Anybody willing to admit that? That's good. Okay. Uh, are there some Kasich supporters here? You know, Kasich's going to you know, gonna, gonna play in Ohio. I mean, this is his state. Okay. So here's the hard truth. Okay. The hard truth is that Ohio is a winner take all state. How many of you know that? Raise your hands. Okay. Now, what does that mean? That means that whoever gets the most votes in Ohio by one vote gets all 66 delegates. A year ago, February of last year, I was talking to the Cruz people about how to win Ohio. And we had, some of you may have seen some things that have been on the web. Uh, we have this thing called Ohio Conservatives United. And it was a series of polls of Tea Party groups and even some live groups as to who we supported. 
and Cruz has been winning that pretty much all along. And the idea was Ohio Conservative United was that we would come behind one person to win, because the only way to really win Ohio would be to consolidate your vote. And so we put together a plan, and we made that plan. Uh, you know, we, we offered that plan to the Cruz camp last June, before John Kasich even announced he was running, before Donald Trump even thought he was running. Okay, and we tried to get people, we tried to get the Cruz campaign to accept Ohio, unifying behind him and working, and they would not do it. And the reason they would not do it is because it's a winner take all with a sitting governor in the race which means that if they lost by one vote, they would lose every dollar they spent and have nothing to show for it. So they are not running in Ohio. They are also not running in Florida. <coughs> and my question to them was, so you're telling me you're running, you're not going to run in Ohio or Florida, but you're telling me you're running for president of the United States of your vote ticket. And they said, yes. And I said, well, you're not. I then said to them, so you're telling me that the Republican establishment, which hates your guts, uh, put these rules in place to make it difficult for you to run in Ohio. And you're trying to tell me that by following your, their rules that they set to stop you, that that's going to cause you to defeat them. And I said, if you believe that, you're just a fool. Okay? But that has been their position. That has been their position. And so, the reality is that right now in Ohio, there are only two people running in the presidential race. And that's John Kasich and Donald Trump. Period. The Trump people have had five paid staffers on the ground since November. They have been organizing, they've got offices, they've been making phone calls, they've been doing some things. Now Trump is not big on that because he's not a politician, so he doesn't you know, understand the ground game like Cruz does. But the cases people understand the ground game. And uh, some of you may have gotten their emails this week where they opened up six offices and you know, and they're they're in full battle here. They're going. Okay. So my point to you is that when you're getting these people calling you and telling you to help work with, you know, Rubio or to help work for Cruz or help work for those people, it's disingenuous. And so Mike and I have spoken. On Tuesday, I spoke to the Rubio campaign. On Wednesday, I spoke to the Trump campaign. On Thursday, I spoke to the Cruz campaign. Okay? I spoke to all three of them. What's your situation? Has it changed? What happened? Okay? And I basically have said to them, either show me you're coming to win, or don't ask my people to help you. One of the things that we have done very poorly all of us, is we have failed to recognize the value that we bring to these relationships. The Tea Party, as newbies, you know, not knowing much, would get all excited because they're going to let us meet with Senator Portman, they're going to let us meet with Senator Portman, or with this congressman, or with this person. Oh, how exciting. I can see Tim laughing, okay? Because the oldest trick in the book. And you're just a common citizen. Oh, I'm going to get to meet a congressman and all that stuff. Okay? And they would ask us to do all kinds of things. And they would, we would have to put up now, and they would promise us stuff later that we never got. Okay? So I'm going to share with you these statistics just so you can understand. I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand the truth. So here's the truth. Okay? Here's the truth. In 2012, the Ohio primary came down to Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum. Remember that? Rick Santorum didn't have two nickels to rub together. And Romney had a lot of money. We got behind Rick Santorum. Not because we hated Mitt Romney, but you know, Rick was more with our values. Right? Mitt Romney spent $14 million in that primary. He spent $14.12 per vote. He won by 1%. And they only won because on the Sunday before the election, they pulled a little dirty trick in the newspaper to get that 1%. They published a lie about Rick Santorum. That's how they won. Okay? Rick Santorum's PACs in 2012 spent $4.6 million. So the difference between Romney and Santorum was 
$10 million. Who put up that $10 million? Who put it up? You did. You did. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Your work, your door knocks, your phone calls, your speaking was worth $10 million. Let me say it again. $10 million you invested in Rick Santorum's campaign. Hard money. Can't buy it. If they tried to buy it, if they tried to buy what you did, it would cost them $20 million. Because no one you're going to pay is going to walk and talk and fight with the enthusiasm you had. Will that? When you're a believer. You ain't going to do it because you're getting paid 10 bucks an hour. You're going to do it because you love the cause, right? So when I speak to these people, when I speak to these campaigns, I make it clear to them what you're asking us to do. Because they ask you, like, what I'm asking is real simple. Oh, just, you know, here, put out some signs and go to our door and come to our Victory Center and make some phone calls. Okay? Because you don't understand what you're worth. I do. And I'm going to make them pay. Or we're not doing it. Okay? So, for instance, when I'm talking to one of the campaigns who just announced to me that they're coming to Cleveland and Ohio this week, they're going to set up five offices. Okay? And I'm supposed to be excited about that. Oh, wow! And I said to them, that's nice. What's your polling say about where you're at in Ohio? Well, we haven't done a poll. What? I'm a businessman. You're telling me you're coming to Ohio and you haven't done a poll? Either you're lying to me or you're stupid. And neither one of them is acceptable. So then they proceed to tell me that they think they need about 498,000 votes to win. And we've done our own calculus, and that's about right. Okay? That's about right. We project that it's going to take about 30 to 32% to win the Republican primary. 30 to 32%. Okay? And that's going to be about 490,000 votes. Okay? So I said to them, you just told me you need 500,000 votes. I know for a fact that you spent $8.12 per vote in New Hampshire. And you finished third. So if you intend to compete in Ohio, you're going to spend, let's say, at least $10 a vote. So I want you to tell me on this phone right now that you're willing to spend $5 million. Yamada, 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 well, we'll see how this will happen, maybe that'll happen. Yeah. Are you coming to win or are you coming to pretend? Don't ask these good people that I'm looking at right now. These people who've given till it hurts. These people have nothing to give and still give. These people who limp and walk with canes to go door to door for you. Don't you dare come to my state. And ask them to fight for you to win when you won't fight to win. Don't you dare. Because I'll rip your face off. I'll defend these people to the death. So that's what you're going to hear. That's what you're already hearing. How many of you guys know what an absentee chase is? Raise your hand. Absentee chase. Not enough of you. Absentee chase is critical. Absentee chase, because Ohio is so prejudiced against blacks that we have voting 30 days in advance, right? Like, we're really keeping you from voting. You can vote for 30 days in advance, and we'll deliver it to your house, but we're trying to keep you from voting because we want to put your photo on an ID, right? Yeah, go read the laws in South Carolina today, which you've got to have to vote in South Carolina. And there's a lot of blacks in South Carolina. You know what? They're all going to vote, too, because they're not dumb, and they're not victims. They can vote. They can get a photo ID. Thank you very much. My black brothers are not stupid, so don't treat them like they're stupid. 
Okay? Don't you know they're a firewall? Yeah, they're a firewall. So here's the point. Okay? So you, you've got this, you know, you, you've got this situation in Ohio where we're voting 30 days in advance. We started voting on Wednesday, 17th. Okay? They're projecting 30% of the votes will come either absentee or early. 30%. So what did I do? I asked their campaign, well, geez, you're coming to Ohio and you're going to set up offices, so what's your absentee chase program? They don't have one. They don't have one. 30% of the people are going to vote before election day and they're not even going to follow up. The absentee chase, just so you know, is any candidate like Kim can go to Lake County Board of Elections every day from now to Election Day and download a file of every Republican, because she's running the Republican primary, every Republican that has asked for an absentee ballot. She downloads that and she can mail them a postcard, okay? And some of us do things like we can get matches of emails and phone numbers. We can send them an email and say, you know, you're going to you'll be voting, please consider voting for Kim Warren. That's what absentee chase is. That chance to impact them right when they get their absentee ballot to ask them to vote for you. You think that might be important? Think that might be important? You think you're going to lose a lot of those votes if you don't follow up on that? So you think if you don't have an absentee chase program that you're really running? I think not. Okay? So now I got some more bad news. I'm full of bad news today. Okay? So I'm involved with a lot of campaigns around the state. So on Wednesday, I started to pull the absentee votes. And on Wednesday, since it's the first day of voting, you get all the people who've asked for absentee ballots like leading up to that day. So you get a big file because it's a backlog. Okay? It's a backlog. So I download the file. It was stunning. 37% of the people asking for Republican absentee ballots have never voted in a Republican primary before. 37%. The turnout is going to be insane in Ohio. All right, I'll give you an example. I'll use Matt Lynch's campaign because I know the figures well enough. When Matt ran in 14, a non-presidential race, non-governor's race, you know, it's a, a low turnout election. Both parties in that race thought the turnout would be about 40,000 in, in a congressional district, okay? Small percentage. And 52,000 people showed up, okay? So it was like a 12,000 people showed up that weren't expected. So Matt's running against Dave Joyce again, and, and it's presidential election year, so you figure, okay, you know, there's going to be a lot more turnout because all these people are you know, geared up for the president. That's historical. You can see that. You can go back and check and see the difference. And so the projected turnout rate this year is 110,000. Double what happened two years ago. Now, again, I just talked to you about what it costs to run a race, right? What it costs per vote. So now you get double the vote, you need double money just to be where you were. Okay? So now what does it mean when 37% more people are going to show up? And guess what? You don't know who they are. You don't know who they are. Who are these people? So the turnout, I project, is going to be about 150,000. 100,000 more people that voted two years ago because of Donald Trump. Right? Well, you said you raise your hand. I'd love you guys. Know, that's, that's right. We got, you know, Donald Trump, we got some things going with Donald Trump. I talk to those people all the time. But the point is, is that this can be a very different election. Because here's the problem for all of us. The problem for all of us is that these people are showing up on emotion. They're angry. They want somebody to do something. And they are attracted to guys like Donald Trump because he's angry too. 
And he wants to do something. Okay? But they're going to walk in there and they're going to see Trump and check that baby off. And who the heck are the rest of these folks? Who's the, who that? Who that down there on that ballot? Who the heck's Kim Lorne? Right? And so they're going to vote by, well, I went to grade school with a Kim, so I'll vote for her. Right? Because that's how people vote. That's how people vote. Okay? And there's a lot at stake. There's a lot at stake. Because these people that we're supporting, okay, I mean, we the People Convention, we, we supported, you know, we put out our endorsement list. We're supporting people like, you know, Janet Folger, uh, you know, Porter Folger, okay? We're supporting, you know, uh, people like John Adams for Senate. Um, you know, we've endorsed, you know, House candidates and things like that. These people are important to us, and we have to find a way to help them win. They got so we can change things. Okay. I'm happy to try that. Okay, so well, apple now I'll tell you some good news. Right? I've been through bad news, lots of bad news. I'm going to tell you some good news. Okay? My point. We are living in a really, really unique yeah. time in history. Okay? And I've always said, I love history. I don't read any fiction or anything like that. I only read uh, histories and biographies. And one thing I know, that everything that ever happened in history, couldn't have happened at any other time. Everything had to come together. The American Revolution couldn't have happened 10 years sooner. And it couldn't have happened 10 years later. It had to happen when it happened. Because the dynamics that made it happen were in place. The Tea Party could not have existed 10 years ago. <coughs> could not. The Tea Party could not have existed 10 years ago. Because 10 years ago, in order for us to organize, we would have had to send an announcement to the local newspaper who would have to print it and say, oh, the Porch Guy Tea Party is getting together, right? So come to this you know, church and meet with us. And they would have gotten a call from the local Republican Party chairman saying, don't print that nonsense. Those people are radicals, right? Dude? Those radicals, don't print that. And they did do that, except it didn't matter. It did not matter because of the internet age that we live in. The Tea Party could not have happened without the internet. And it's changing dynamically. It's changing very quickly. Okay? And that's good. That is an asset for us. That gives us a power that we could have never had before. The power to organize. The power to have this meeting. The power to research. The power to know what's going on. We didn't know. We were clueless, folks. Yeah, we were clueless. I've been clueless. I'm 60 years old. I was clueless for 54 years at least. Because there was no way to know. And that's that Heritage article talks about. If you go and read it. If you go to my Facebook page and click on, on uh, that, you'll see it. And... So the answer to your question is that today, even two years ago, Facebook advertising wasn't what it is today. Even two years ago, digital advertising wasn't what it was today. The tools weren't in place. Okay? So, the, so think about it. The typical situation would be in an election is what I just said to you, all these people are going to show up where you don't know who they are. So what do you have to do to reach them? Well, you would normally buy radio and TV, right? They're called broadcast mediums, mediums, so that people see them by stumbling across them, right? Except it's very expensive, and it's very inefficient, because it's not targeted, okay? But what you can do today is you can buy ads on Facebook. And you can target precisely. Okay, good. I can put that the zip right. codes of Lake County into my advertising on Facebook. And I can say, here's a message for people who own uh, small businesses. And, and I can put an ad out on Facebook to people who indicate they're involved with small business in Lake County with that specific ad. And it's dirt cheap. It's dirt cheap. 
I know of a case where we spent $250 to promote a video that was viewed by 40,000 people for $250. I have a video on my website that just got seen. Remember, it was a Janet Porter Folgers uh, video with Mike Huckabee and Dorsener. That thing, I think, has been seen by several thousand people already, right? Right? I didn't even spend any money on it. I just put it on my Facebook page. That's the advantage. I can go to Google, and I can go to companies that specialize in digital advertising, and I can say, I want to put this little square ad or you know banner ad on the bottom on web pages to people who are Republicans in the 8th Congressional District who follow Mark Levin and Rush Limbaugh and who are Christians. And when they go on Walmart.com looking for a new filter for their furnace, my ad pops up. Pretty powerful tool. And guess what? That's how Barack Obama won in 2008 and 2012. That's how Barack Obama won. And guess what? And I did this on my radio show, so you can listen last week's show, not this week's show. And I talked about how Ted Cruz is the only one who figured out how Obama won and is using it to win. He's got the best analytics team in the business. They are studying voters and study voter tendencies, and they are using digital ads to target those specific voters with their specific message. I'm going to say that to you again. This is very important. They are using that data to target very specific voters with very specific messages. Both those things are very important. Because if I target a specific voter with a non-specific message, it will be much less effective. And if I don't target voters with a specific message, it will be equally ineffective. You must target Denver with a life message. Because that's his issue. And you know what? He's a conservative and he kind of cares about a lot of things but he really isn't interested in my NRA postings. He is. He, he's a multi-issue guy. Okay? But he doesn't want me to put out something maybe that's about, you know, some bill about the budget. Okay? What Barack Obama's team did in 2008 and 2012 that we did not understand, we did not understand it, was they micro-targeted Read the book. I've read the books. I'm in business. I'm a small businessman. I know how to compete. Coach and I were talking about coaching and learning from your opponent, right? So I made it my business to read how Barack Obama did it. They took emails and they would send a different email to a hundred different groups to see which one tested better before sending out the email that went to everyone. Did you get that? Right? They weren't throwing it out there to see what sticks. They were using science. They were using mathematics. They were using Google and Yahoo and I think the NSA as well. Okay? Because they knew everything about you. And so they were targeting people on issues and getting the vote absentee and early. And that's why we didn't see them at the polls and we thought they had to have cheated to one to win, because we didn't see them. They were like ghosts. I had people at polling locations in Ravenna, Ohio, the day of the election, there were so few new people who came that we actually, in the afternoon, pulled them up and took them to the Republican polling areas because the lines were out the doors. Yes, I do. And we said, we got to win. It's beautiful. That's none of them were voting. It's only what we had. They aren't even voting. So the Cruz campaign told me in a meeting in December <clears throat> that their people met with the Romney people. And the Romney people had 100 people working on data. 100 people, full time. They spent like $100 million on data. And the Cruz people said, 
And what did you do with it? And their guy said, nothing. They didn't use it. Because the people running the Romney campaign were old school you know, consultants, political consultants, who just wanted to spend money on TV and radio and all those things that weren't effective. At the end of the 2012 presidential campaign, the Romney people were paying $100 for a TV spot that the Obama campaign was banning $15 for. And the Romney people not only didn't have a clue, they didn't care. Because our Tea Party people were telling them what was wrong with their message. We had people, who's Tea Party? We're business people, we're entrepreneurs, we're thinkers, we're Americans. So I got people writing up TV commercials and sending them to me. And I'm sending them on the Romney people. And they're going, oh, these amateurs don't know anything. Yeah, these amateurs built a business that you couldn't even run, you fool. That's a fact. Okay? So that's how we're going to compete. That's how you have to compete. That's how you have to win the life issue. That's how you have to fight social issues. You've got to micro-target. And we're just, I mean, I'm not telling you that I've been doing this forever. I'm telling you, this has just come to me in the last year as I went to work trying to figure out what was going on, okay? So let me explain to you what, what I've been doing wrong and what frustrates me. And we all do it. I said we got 2,600 members in our group. They all get the same email. Because I don't have any way of separating it out, right? I don't even know who my own people are as far as their issues specifically. Right? Because I haven't been focused on that. So when I send out that message about we're going to help act and we're going to have a sign wave about illegal immigration, I send it out to 2,600 people. You know what? There's about three, 400 of them who are really fired up about immigration. But I just wasted the other 2,200 people's time. Right? <clears throat> That's the problem. That's what we have to fix. That's what we have to learn. And there are tools for doing that. And there's going to be more tools. But the reason you find it hard to grow your group, the reason you find it hard, okay, to maintain the energy of your group, is because you're not paying attention to what they care about. As a Tea Party leader, I, I think I can say to you that one of the reasons our group is more successful than most in the state is because a long time ago, I came up with this idea that if Someone in my group wants to do something as a leader, my first reaction should be to let them. All the leaders wanted to dictate, well, we're not interested in that. You know, we're doing this, so you want to put on a play, okay? You want to do a play about the Constitution. Play, I'm a guy, I want to build a float, you know? Heck with your play. But God was kind to me, okay, and spoke in my ear, or well, my wife spoke in my other ear, okay? And so we created a thing called Liberty Camp for Kids. And we created a thing called the Porch County Fair Tent, which has won awards and is an amazing achievement to reach out to different people. And you know what? There was passion about that. Not everyone will do everything, but everyone will do something. Your job is to figure out what it is. So I'll tell you a story about we were running a campaign for a young lady who was running for county commissioner in Porch County. She had no money. We had no money. But we had energy. We had ideas. And I would have all these events and people would show up and things like that. And we decided that we were going to get lumber. And we were going to get guys with pickup trucks. And we were going to cut these two by fours and we would make these four by eight signs for this candidate and put them in these pickup trucks and they would drive around the county so people could see it. Okay? And half our group thought I was insane. Okay? And the other half thought it wouldn't work. Okay? They thought I was insane. They thought, well, he's maybe not insane, but it's not going to work. Who showed up? Guys I've never seen before. Because they want to use a circular saw. They want to use a drill. They're pulling up in their trucks, man. We're building them sides. Okay? And I'm driving my truck. I love my truck. Okay, I'm putting that sign on my truck. I'm driving everywhere. 
I want people looking at my truck. Okay? Because that's what they want to do. And I'm smart enough to give them a chance to do it. Okay? Be open. Activism comes in all kinds of forms. We've got to express ourselves differently. <coughs> We've got to give ourselves a chance to express ourselves differently. But then, you can't just do that. You've got to go further. Okay? And that means you've got to really know your group. You literally have to survey your group on issues and start building email lists that are based on issues. So when, you know, as I say to you, these people send me things all over the state and all over the country, send me things, and I get something that's really good about life, I can send it to my life list. Right? Don't send it to everybody. Send it to the life list. And then you know what you do? You post it on your Facebook page. And then you know what you do? If you ever do this, if you're on Facebook, you better be on Facebook, you better get there. It's important, okay? And not to show me pictures of what you're eating for dinner, okay? It's important to do something important, okay? But when you post that life story that's really good, when you post it, the little blue thing says, it says boost. Boost. And so now you say, hey, I'm gonna boost this to people in my county or in 